I'm done with the housework for today. I've also prepared the food for New Year's. Okay. Good job. Now, now you, you can, can go, go home and leave, leave us, us in, in peace. peace. Thanks for everything, Melanie. I'll let my sister and mother know that they should be nicer to you the next time. Don't worry about it. Today is the end of the year, and I'm happy to go home. But you're coming back in the new year too, right? Trouble Busters! Melanie? Hey, Melanie! Yes? Do you need anything? Have you finished cleaning this room yet? Yes, I'm done with this room. You must be joking. Look at all the dust in here. I dusted everything so the room is clean. Well, please clean it again because the room is still dirty. Um... Okay. Melanie, you need to put in more of an effort. My mother is allergic to dust. I don't know why they're being so picky. I dusted everything off. You can't get away with not cleaning the rooms properly. That's right. If you're this lousy at cleaning, your own house must be a huge mess. The room looks clean to me. I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to do here. Look at this cabinet, for example. It's very dusty. If you can't reach the cabinets, you should use a stepladder. It would be nice if I got a little help from you two. My name is Melanie, and my husband Ted and I have a five-year-old daughter together. I wanted a grandson, not a granddaughter. You're completely useless, Melanie. I have two boys, which makes me the special one in this family. They only wanted to bully me. I couldn't get on a stepladder every day to clean the cabinet. I wasn't their housekeeper. Fine. I'll clean the cabinet once a week. That's doable. Why are you so lazy? You should clean it every day. If you have the time to complain, you should go back to cleaning this house. Don't you need to leave soon to pick up Sarah from school? You don't want to be late again, do you? Ugh. I had already dusted and cleaned the cabinet yesterday. It wasn't dirty. Keep going. We want our house to be sparkling clean. Stop shaking my stepladder. Hurry up, Melanie. You don't have much time left. What are you two doing? No time to be playing games in here. Melanie is so useless. She can't even get one cabinet cleaned. Ouch. You made me fall down. I may have twisted my ankle. Don't fake an injury so that you can get out of cleaning. I'm not lying. I'm really hurt. You haven't finished cleaning the bathroom yet. I'm in a lot of pain, and I can't move. I may have even broken a bone, but those two don't care about me at all. My mother and sister-in-law continued to order me around. They even asked me to prepare dinner for them. Once I was done with this house, I needed to go over to my sister-in-law's apartment and cook and clean for her family as well. Both my mother and sister-in-law were housewives too. Why did they make me do all the housework by myself? It wasn't fair. If I was going to be their housekeeper, they should have the decency to pay me. Sarah, I'm sorry to make you wait for so long. Mommy, I missed you. Let's go home and play together. Yeah, let's go. I felt lonely because everyone went home before me. But I know that you're busy, so I can wait. I love it when you come pick me up. Let's go home and take a bath together. Thank you for being so understanding, Sarah. Let's make it a bubble bath tonight. I love Sarah so much. She always chewed me up with her smiles and told me funny stories. She had a big imagination. Why are you always so late in picking Sarah up? I feel sorry for her. I had some work to do at my in-law's place. Look, you need to come pick Sarah up at a reasonable time like the other parents. We can't keep this daycare open for an extra few hours just for you. It wouldn't be fair to the other parents. I apologize for the inconvenience. I won't be late anymore. Sarah is trying to be okay with you being late, but she has nothing to do after the other kids go home. You shouldn't make a young child wait for hours like this. It's not healthy. Yes, I'm sorry about this. People may start to think that you're a bad mother to Sarah. You make a good point. If you aren't able to come pick up Sarah on time, I'm going to have to have a word with your husband. Yes, I'll be careful and make sure that I'm not late anymore. I don't know how you can call yourself a mother. Beats me. I feel sorry for your husband as well. Mommy, are you feeling all right? You're sweating and there's no color in your face. I'm fine, sweetie. No need to worry about me. But I was lying. I wasn't fine. The ankle that I had sprained or even broken was starting to hurt. I was in extreme pain. I was pretending that my ankle was fine, but it wasn't. Actually, Sarah, my ankle is hurting. A lot. We need to go to a hospital then. What do we do now? Well, first, I need to get you home. I'll go to the hospital after your father comes home from work. I'm five years old. I can take care of myself. I can wait for you at home. You should go to the hospital now. I'm going to be in elementary school next year. You can count on me, mommy. Sarah, you're so sweet. I knew that Sarah was trying to protect me, but I couldn't leave a five-year-old home by herself. In the end, I decided to go to the hospital with Sarah and order takeout for dinner. 
I also called Ted to let him know what had happened to me. Ted wasn't home when Sarah and I returned from the hospital. Honey, I'm home! Hi, honey. As you can see, I'm in crutches. Oh, that must suck. How are you going to get all the housework done in those crutches? Do you know why I'm in crutches? I didn't do this to myself. Look, if you're going to speak ill of my mother and sister, I want no part in it. But they're your family, not mine. I need you to speak to them. Don't you think it's unfair that I'm doing the housework for three households by myself? It doesn't make any sense. I'm not a housekeeper. I said that I didn't want to hear you complaining about my family. You need to deal with this on your own. Look, not everyone gets along with their in-laws. Just figure out a way to not let them bother you. In fact, my mother and sister complain about how useless you are all the time. Think about how this makes me feel. Well, have you ever thought about how their behavior towards me makes me feel? It could be a misunderstanding. My mother and sister are quite likable. It was your sister that caused me to fall off the stepladder and break my ankle. She did this to me on purpose. I'm sure that she meant it as a joke and didn't think that you'd actually fall. You could have avoided it from happening if you had tried. I can't believe that you'd say such a thing to me. Well, it's true. You're clumsy. Could you ask them to stop making me go over to their homes every day to do all their housework? What do I have to ask them that? You do it. I wouldn't be asking you if I could resolve this on my own, but I can't. I tried to ignore their calls, but whenever I do, they come over to our house and nag me. Why did you give them our key without asking me first? Well, they're family and I wanted them to have our spare key for emergencies. I don't see anything wrong with that. You gave them a reason to come over to our house unannounced and it's a nightmare for me. It bothers me that they come over whenever they want to. I can't even relax in my own home. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But there isn't anything we can do about it now, is there? Can't you ask for the keys back? It's a real nuisance for me. All they do is cause trouble for me and I've had enough. Please don't say that about my family. It hurts my feelings. Well, it hurts my feelings that you care more about your family than Sarah or I. Can we change the subject now? I'm sick and tired of talking about this. Can you just try to get along with them? I'm going to go take a bath now. Let me say one more thing. What more is there to say? I messaged you earlier to let you know that I had broken my ankle. Couldn't you have made an effort to come home earlier? It's past midnight already. You don't care about me at all, do you? Ah, <sighs> it's only a broken ankle. What's the big deal? Besides, me coming home earlier isn't going to make your ankle any better. So you didn't even consider coming home early to comfort me then? <sighs> what do you want me to say? You can't force me to act the way that you want me to. Give me some space, okay? I think you just gave me my answer. You clearly only care about yourself. Let me say this then. I'm the one that paid for our dinners tonight. If I didn't work hard like I do, you wouldn't have been able to afford takeout for dinner tonight. You should be more thankful. You don't know how hard I work to provide for this family. How many times do I have to tell you that your sister did this to me? I'm the victim here. I can't believe that you're trying to blame this all on my sister. If you made an effort to get along with my mother and sister, none of this would have happened. This is all your fault. Don't try to blame us for what happened. I'd like to know why you came home so late. Are you trying to change the subject because you don't want to admit that this is your fault? You're the one that's been trying to dodge all my questions. Well, if you must know, I was out drinking with my mother and sister. See? Look at this photo. If you got along with them, we'd have invited you out tonight. Ted went to take his bath. I was very annoyed because he was indifferent to my problems. I took another look at the family photo that Ted showed me earlier. Something about the photo seemed off. I sensed that Ted was hiding something from me, and it would only be a matter of time until I found out. I was going to get to the bottom of this. The following day, my mother and sister-in-law called me over to their homes again. They didn't seem to care that I had broken my ankle. I'm so tired and my ankle is starting to hurt. Why don't you pull up a chair so that you can sit down while you cook? Please don't do that. Why not? Don't you think that your cast looks better this way? <laughs> what kind of idiot falls from a stepladder and breaks their ankle? They didn't know this, but my plan for revenge had already begun. I only needed to put up with them a little longer. Before I knew it, it was the end of the year. I need to hurry. How long is it taking you to prepare this meal for us? You're a housewife. You should be good at this by now. I'm almost done. Well, don't take your time. We're all waiting. Okay. Where's Sarah, by the way? She's spending the day with my parents today. Shouldn't she be spending the holidays with us, though? Oh, well, whatever. She doesn't mean that much to me anyway. Sarah's such an odd child. I see. I'm done preparing. You can start cleaning the living room then. I'm on it. Oh, I love these salty potato chips. They're so good. Today's New Year's Eve. We expect you to clean this house thoroughly. 
Yes, of course. I continued to clean the rest of the house, including the bathrooms and the ventilators. I even did a little gardening. I was confident that I could become a good housekeeper after all the work I did for my in-laws. By the time I was done, the rest of the family had already started drinking and were tipsy. They had also eaten all the food that I had prepared. What took you so long, Melanie? Mm, there isn't any food for you left. I guess you should go home and fix yourself something to eat. Yes, you're right. Don't mind me. Well, if you're done here, you can go home now. Thanks for everything, Melanie. I'll let my sister and mother know that they should be nicer to you the next time. Don't worry about it. Today's the end of the year and I'm happy to go home. You seem happy today. Did something good happen to you? Really? I guess I'm just happy that I was able to get all the cleaning and cooking done by the end of the year. I see. Good for you. I hope that you get along with my mother and sister next year. I don't like it when the three of you don't get along. It makes me sad. I want to take your side, but I don't want to offend my mother and sister, if you know what I mean. Yes, you make a good point. So, no hard feelings, right? Nope. No need to worry about me. Today was my last day anyway. I'll be on my way now. Huh? It was nice knowing you, Ted. What are you talking about, Melanie? Ah! Ouch! My leg is killing me! I heard Ted yelling something, but I no longer cared. I walked away from the house without looking back. I was going to get back at Ted and his family for the way they mistreated me for so long. I wasn't going to forgive them. Trouble busters. Hello? What the hell is going on, Melanie? If you read the letter that I left you, you would know the answer to your question, Ted. Where are you now? Come home at once! I'm not answering that, nor coming home. You bitch! You have no right to be angry with me. You cheated on me, you asshole! Do you like the photo that I took of you and your lover? It all made sense when I found out that you were having an affair with Sarah's teacher! This is all a misunderstanding, Melanie. We met up because Sarah's teacher said that she wanted to speak to me about our daughter. Was it really necessary for you to meet her in a hotel room, though? Don't lie to my face. Can you please come home so that we can talk about this? I have nothing to say to you. If you want to say something to me, you can leave a message with my divorce lawyer. You have it all wrong. Nothing is going on between me and Sarah's teacher. I'm going to be very angry if I find out later that you were lying to me. Well, I'm not lying. Before you say anything else, let me tell you that our conversation is being recorded. If you lie to me, things could get ugly for you. Well, um... I've arranged so that we can meet face to face three days later. My divorce lawyer will be with me. I'm sorry for cheating on you. It was a huge mistake. You're the love of my life. As long as you pay me $60,000 in alimony, I don't really care what you have to say for yourself. If you deny me this, I'm taking you to court. 60 grand? Court? Is this for real? Can't we resolve this without involving lawyers? We can't. I can't seem to level with you because we don't see things eye to eye, and what you did to me is unforgivable. I'm not just talking about your affair. All I want to do now is make sure that you end up miserable. Ah, <laughs> Melanie, I don't know what to say except that I'm truly sorry. Oh no, she hung up the phone on me. Three days later, Ted and I sat down for a meeting with my divorce lawyer by my side. Ted was accompanied by his dreadful mother and sister. What's gonna happen now? I had no idea that Melanie was planning on divorcing you. <laughs> Not only did I hire a lawyer, but I also got myself a private investigator. As you can see in the evidence that I have provided, Ted was having an affair with his daughter's teacher. I am 100% confident that Melanie will win her case against Ted. You should all be prepared for the consequences. 60 grand is a lot of money. Isn't alimony usually set to 20 or 30 grand? Perhaps, but Melanie is allowed to set the amount to whatever she thinks is appropriate. Considering the emotional abuse she experienced from her in-laws, and the fact that you did nothing to support her makes the amount justifiable. Fine, then we'll be seeing you two in court then. This isn't fair. Well then, we'll be submitting the evidence of your infidelity to the court then. Your name will be recorded as a respondent in the court files. Is that really necessary? I'm certain that your employer wouldn't be happy about this. You could even get fired over this. You have the title of Vice President at the age of 37. That's pretty impressive. It'd be a shame to see your career being ruined over this. I can't let you do that to my career. I work really hard and my job title is what makes me popular with women. Well, even if you're able to keep your fancy job title, you won't be able to use the money like you do now. You have two options. Fight it out with me in court and possibly lose your job over it, or agree to pay the $60,000 to me. I don't understand how you got evidence of my affair. I was pretty good at keeping it a secret. I mean, I make sure to delete all communication with my lovers from my smartphone. I just sensed that something was off which led me to believe that you were cheating on me. What gave it away? When you showed me that photo of your family dinner, I knew that something didn't add up. 
There were four table settings instead of three, which meant there was one more person at the dinner and it wasn't me. Who notices something so small? I'm actually impressed by your attention to detail. You were stupid enough to show me that photo which made me realize that you were truly scum. If you were planning to show me the photo, you should have made sure that there was no evidence in it. But I wouldn't expect you to be so crafty. I'm glad that you showed me that photo, because that's the moment that I realized that I no longer wanted to stay married to you. I didn't even need to check your smartphone for any evidence. I hired a private investigator and he gathered everything that I needed. Of course, I fully cooperated with my private investigator to get what we needed. What did you do? Well, when you told me one day that you were going on a business trip, I called my PI. I won't be coming home tonight because I have a business trip. That day, I laid out your clothes, underwear, and socks for you, but I made sure to select the ragged ones. I then confirmed that you left what I selected for you and took your nice clothes with you instead. I then assumed that you were going to spend the night with your lover. Why else would you take nice underwear with you, right? I mean, you usually don't care too much about your appearance when you're with me, but seeing that you were so careful about what you wore on a business trip, including your underwear and socks, I knew that something fishy was going on. I performed the same experiment on a day that I assumed you weren't seeing your lover, and you took your raggedy underwear with you on that occasion. You're unbelievable! How dare you trick me like that! I had no idea that you could be so insidious! You're one to talk! You allowed your mother and sister to bully me for months, and on top of that you had an affair with Sarah's teacher? Who does that? Once I figured out that you were going to spend a night at a hotel with Sarah's teacher, I asked my PI to take photos as evidence. I don't know what to say. This is all so unexpected! Now, on to your mother and sister. You both knew that Ted was having an affair and hid it from me. That's not true. We had no idea. That's right. We had no idea that Ted was having an affair with Sarah's teacher. Then what do you have to say about this? My mother and I are trying to get rid of Melanie as we speak. Right, Mom? That's right. Our plan is working beautifully. Once Melanie and Ted are divorced, we'd like for you to get married to Ted and work on having a son with him. I'm only 25 years old. That makes me six years younger than Melanie. You can count on me to produce a healthy son. We're counting on you. We're so happy to have your blessing. Are you going home tonight? No, I told Melanie that I have a business trip, so I'm spending the night at Mia's house. Okay, we'll make sure that Melanie doesn't find out about this. I can't wait to kick Melanie out of our lives. I'm so sick of her. I gave her a broken ankle. Hopefully that did some damage to her heart as well. <laughs> <laughs> the severity of Ted's affair becomes more serious because the entire family except for Melanie knew about it. So I think that the amount of alimony Melanie is asking you for is completely reasonable. The least you can do is pay for all my mental suffering. In addition to the 60 grand, Melanie will be asking for half of the assets that you share as a couple. I think that will make everything easier for everyone if you agree to our terms now. We also informed Ted's father about this. He's on a business trip, but he's been brought up to date. We also took the liberty of informing Ted's sister's husband. Was that really necessary? This is none of my husband's business. What were you thinking? I want all three of you to experience hell like I did. Melanie, you need to take back what you told my husband. You had no right telling my husband either. What if he divorces me because of what you said to him? Melanie, this is all my fault. There's no need to punish my mother and sister for it. We're sorry. We're sorry, truly. It's too late to try to fix this. The damage has been done. Your punishment is coming your way, and there's nothing you can do about it. Go to hell, all of you. <laughs> this can't be happening to us. <laughs> Ted realized that it'd be better for him to agree to my terms rather than dragging it out to court. He agreed to pay me $60,000 in alimony, 15 years worth of child support, and give me half of our assets. He might have a prestigious job, but this divorce was going to cost him. I decided not to inform Ted's company about the affair since he agreed to my terms, but the rumor spread anyway. Do you want to hear what I found out about Ted? He had an affair and had to pay his wife $60,000 as alimony. Hey, do you want to know a secret about Ted? I have no idea how his colleagues found out about Ted's affair, but they did and the news spread like fire. Senior management also heard the rumors and are pressuring Ted to resign from his position. Ted's been reassigned to a post in an obscure location where the company sends its unwanted employees. Ted now spends his days at work hand copying past documents onto a different piece of paper. In other words, he was forced to do meaningless work. As for my mother and sister-in-law, their husbands were furious about what they had done to me and they both got divorced because of it. Ted's mother and sister moved into a small shabby apartment together and had to live frugally because they both didn't have jobs. 
I also sued Sarah's teacher for having an affair with Ted. I detested her because she always looked down on me and disrespected me. It turns out that Mia had a fiancé, and when he found out that she cheated on him, he left her. Mia's fiancé sued her as well, and she had to pay him $20,000 as palimony. I also complained about Mia to the head of the school, and she was fired from her job. I didn't feel comfortable having her continue to teach at Sarah's school. As for me, I started dating my lawyer, Alan. We got along really well, and we eventually got married. And Sarah loved him too, which made the choice for me to marry Alan much easier. And right now, I'm pregnant with Alan's baby. I couldn't be happier. We found out that we're having a boy, and Sarah's super excited to become a big sister. I was tempted to rub it in my former mother-in-law's face, but I decided to be the bigger person. Trouble busters.